So guys, I know what the title of this video says, but I want to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about the RTX 2080 and the RTX 2080 Ti launch. Don't worry, I will talk about the RTX 2070 a little bit later on in the video, but I want to dial back uh, a few days, or I just want to dial back and talk about this particular launch that took place a few days ago. Now, that day was certainly interesting for us here at Hyrule Connects, and to be honest with you, we really appreciate your feedback, both positive and negative. In fact, smart folks say that people learn from uh, criticisms rather than uh, compliments, and everyone here at the team takes them to heart. So, about the RTX 2080 and the RTX 2080 Ti video, we still stand by our results and conclusions 100%. But, but, before you start going crazy all over the comments, we realize that uh, there's still more room for information and additional perspectives. Now, there's been a lot of questions from our audience about how well the custom GTX 1080 Ti cards from board partners stack up to the RTX 2080. It actually got me and the rest of the team wondering if moving outside the Founders Edition spec would change the results. Well, we're gonna find out, but not with something like the GTX 1080 Ti Strix OC or Zotac Amp Edition GPU, since both of those cost even more than the RTX 2080 Founders Edition on Newegg and Amazon right now. They also represent the absolute highest pre-overclock spec of a previous generation design, and using those would just serve to stack the deck both positively and negatively. So what we did is order a more affordable custom and pre-overclocked EVGA GTX 1080 Ti that will be compared against the RTX 2080. It will be interesting to see how the two cards stack up when both have downdraft coolers. Anyways, uh, that's the end of this public message. You spoke, we listened, and as usual, uh, we really appreciate your feedback. So now on to the RTX 2070. And to be honest, I think it's gonna have a tough time competing against last gen cards. So let's dive into that right after this. The new Masterkeys MK750 keyboard comes with a comfortable magnetic wrist rest, beautiful RGB light bar on the perimeter and perky lighting control with a variety of Cherry MX switches and a bottom Type-C connection. Cooler Master doing it right. Check it out below. Okay, so back when Nvidia first announced the RTX 2080 Ti and the RTX 2080, there was another little surprise, the RTX 2070. This is actually the first time that there were three different GPUs at three different price points that were announced and it showed Nvidia was ready to replace their entire high-end GPU lineup. Not only that, but they were replacing them with products that are much, much more expensive. That's a pretty big problem since it automatically sets expectations based on what looks like inflated prices rather than the merits of the GPUs themselves. Let's quickly go through the RTX 2070 specifications since they will set the stage for the rest of this video. This is what Nvidia is calling their TU-106 core, and right away people will make an association with the GP-106 core that was used in the GTX 1060. Back then, the GTX 1070 and 1070 Ti used a cut-down GP-104 core from the GTX 1080, but this time around, Nvidia decided to build a brand new design for the RTX 2070. In this case, it means that the RTX 2070 will get a fully enabled TU-106 core with 2,304 CUDA cores, 144 texture units, 64 ROPs, and a 256-bit wide memory bus. In many ways, this looks like a GTX 2080 core that's simply been cut in half, but with memory controllers, L3 cache, and ROPs remaining intact for the bigger GPU. I can't say this for certain, but it looks like the main reason Nvidia designed a new chip for the RTX 2070 was power efficiency. Instead of needing to use the power-hungry 215-watt TU-104 as a baseline, the standard RTX 2070 will consume about 175 watts. Okay, so before I get into the specs of the baseline RTX 2070 GPU, I do want to mention that you should take pricing on these GPUs with a huge bucket of salt, because with the RTX 2080 and the RTX 2080 Ti, the pricing on those GPUs uh, just made me feel frustrated and uh, currently with the pricing, I mean, you really can pick up those GPUs at the starting price that Nvidia is claiming, uh, which is definitely frustrating and disappointing. Uh, so, you know, while the RTX 2070 is supposed to start at $500, I'm gonna call BS on that because I don't think you'll be able to pick up a GPU uh, at that price during launch in October. And honestly, I would hope, I hope to be proven wrong, but with the current state of RTX pricing, it, it really makes me feel angry. And like I said in my original review, you are paying for a bunch of promises that are supposed to happen sometime in the near future, but there is no guarantee to that. So here are the specs that I've been talking about, and on paper, at least it looks like Nvidia is keeping a good separation between the RTX 2070, the 2080, and the 2080 Ti, with between $200 and $300 gap between them. 
You can also see that despite having less cores, the RTX 2070 keeps the 256-bit, 8GB memory interface, which may be a key point for 4K gameplay. Whether or not it will have enough physical processing cores to back up that interface is another matter though. Now, if we add the GTX 1080 and the GTX 1070 series, you can see where this RTX 2070 may get into a bit of trouble. While the GTX 1080 launched around $550, most custom and pre-overclocked board partner versions currently go for $480 to $510. Meanwhile, it has more cores, more texture units, and faster clock speeds than the identically priced RTX 2070. And again, I'm saying identically priced because I'm certain it'll almost be impossible to find a $500 RTX 2070 on launch day. What will probably be even more interesting to see is how this new card lines up against the newer GTX 1070 Ti. For its current price of between $420 and $460, that card is an absolute beast in benchmarks. So here's a bigger potential problem. The RTX 2070 Founders Edition costs another $100, or 20% on top of the $500 NVIDIA is asking us to pay. Let me say that again, my friends. The RTX 2070 Founders Edition is $600. Now, maybe this card will surprise us with its performance, but I think we can actually see what the challenge of adding RTX features looks like in cards that are supposed to be more affordable. Those features add die space and thus increase production cost for the whole lineup. I also have to wonder at what point does adding RT and Tensor functionality to lower-end cores like the TU-106 become a matter of diminishing returns. At some point in time, I'm sure there just won't be enough of those specialized cores on a chip to properly process AI and ray tracing. I'd also like to mention that we've entered an odd time in the GPU market because people really don't care about the die size or the transistor counts. Uh, what they did see is the current or the new lineup costing significantly higher uh, than the previous generation, specifically the Founders Edition GPUs. Uh, and What's really interesting is, I guess, the bigger problem uh, to this whole launch is that even though the 20 or the 2000 series offer impressive performance at 4K, uh, it just doesn't promise or it doesn't deliver the RTX features that they do claim to be. So, like I said in my original review, you are paying for uh, something that just is not reality. And if NVIDIA fails to promise or if, it, if they fail to deliver uh, RTX's true potential, then, then there's going to be hell to pay. So the RTX 2070 Founders Edition is a much shorter card than the RTX 2080 series, but it still has the downdraft style cooler. In this case, everything looks shrunken down to a smaller scale. There's still plenty of high-end finishing and a glowing GeForce logo. Just like those other cards, I think this one looks pretty good and that doesn't mean it's worth the $100 premium. One major difference is the location of the power connector on this example. Even though the card is shorter, which could make it an eventual solution for small form factor systems, Nvidia made the weird decision to put it around the back. That just adds to its length and limits compatibility, so I think it's a very odd move from Nvidia. There's another missing element on this back plate and I'll give you five seconds to figure out what it is. All right, so time's up, and if you know the answer, well, here it is. There's no NV link connector to pass an SLI signal between two graphics cards. That's because the TU-106 core doesn't support multi-card configurations. Now, you may be able to use DX12's explicit multi-GPU technology in some instances, but that's just a workaround, and it doesn't cut to the heart of this problem. This could be another big miss for NVIDIA, in my opinion. With every generation, it seems like the ability to multiply cards gets constrained just a bit more. With Pascal, it was a GTX 1060, but now it's the 2070. What's next? Now, I'm sure the number of people actually using SLI on GTX 1070 cards wasn't huge, but the option was still there and not having it on a $600 GPU just feels wrong. Treat your ears with the incredibly comfortable HD 58X Jubilee headphones from Massdrop and Sennheiser, delivering sound expected from $500 headphones, but only for 150 bucks, making it one of the best price to performance skins available. Check out and join the drop down below. So there you guys have it. Everything that you need to know before the RTX 2070 benchmarks are revealed sometime in October. And now do yourself a favor and don't fall into this whole pre-order phenomenon thingy with this particular card because if I were you, I would wait for reviews. And better yet, if you don't need a cutting edge card for 4K, then I would wait until 2019 to see if those RTX promises are actually kept. Because for a card like this, uh, there's bound to be some performance sacrifices somewhere. 
I'm also pretty concerned about what we've seen from the RTX 2070 so far, since out of all the RTX series cards, its Founders Edition pricing seems the most out of whack. The 2080 was expensive, while the 2080 Ti is hideously expensive, but this card looks like it's forcing up the cost of the popular mainstream market. Come review time, Nvidia may have a tough time convincing us that a TU-106 based GPU is worth $600. But you never know, miracles do happen. But hopefully this quick preview will prevent you from making any rash decisions on pre-ordering before that time comes. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the full performance rundown between the custom GTX 1080 Ti that we uh, ordered from EVGA, and of course we'll put it up against the RTX 2080 Founders Edition, uh, and of course we will do a lot of RTX content, specifically comparing you know, custom board partner cards with the GTX 1080 Ti, with the RTX 2080, and we will give you guys the full analysis when it comes to temperatures and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of content uh, hitting or coming your way, so again, stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next one.